Okay, I'm glad that you have decided to join me today for this edition of our Bible study from the Epistle of 1 John. And uh, we are working our way through the first chapter of this epistle, and we have covered the first six verses. If you've missed any part of this study up until this point, we've had four videos. This will be number five. Uh, but I would like to let you know that we have organized these videos into a playlist that is now available on our YouTube channel. You can click on that playlist at your convenience and watch any or all of these videos. Okay, let's look into the Word of God. We are in 1 John chapter 1, verse number 7. The scripture says here, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ His Son cleanseth us from all sin. Now, this is what we might call the contrary supposition that says, uh, well, we really do walk in the light, uh, if that is the case. Uh, walking in the light is used here as a metaphor to speak of the entire Christian life. As children of God, you and I should be moving forward in the Lord. We should be putting one foot in front of the other day by day and walking along and, uh, and progressing and making some progress in our Christian, Christian walk. That doesn't mean that you're going to have some great feat of spirituality take place each day in your life. Uh, oftentimes our progress may be rather unspectacular from a human perspective. But you can still walk in the light. You can still grow in the Lord. You can still uh, progress day by day in your Christian walk uh, and move forward. This is what walking in the light is all about. Uh, so we see here that the requirement for fellowship is to walk in the light and to let that light reveal right from wrong and then to continue to respond to that light. Uh, to walk in the light is to live each day with a concern for righteousness. And John is reinforcing this concern for righteousness in the greatest possible way that we could speak of uh, when he says, as he is in the light. You see, that's how we are to walk in the light, even as he is in the light. Uh, with a concern for righteousness, that's what's in view here. Jesus spoke along these same lines in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5. In verse number 48, when he said, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And that word perfect there is not speaking of a sinless perfection, although that is what God requires of you and I. That's why we need a Savior. Uh, you and I are not perfect. Uh, there's only been one perfect individual who's ever lived on this earth, and that was the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need his righteousness imputed to our account in order to be saved. But we're speaking of being complete in mind and complete in character. Thayer's Greek lexicon says concerning that word perfect that it's referring to one who has reached the proper height of virtue and has reached the proper height of integrity. That's how our lives should be if we are truly walking in the light as we should be. Uh, we are moving forward for God and we are moving forward with God. Uh, we need to face the reality today and the fact that we are not called to trifle with low standards. So many folks today are stuck in the carnal mindset that says, well, you know, if I can just attain a decent human standard, that'll be good enough. Uh, but a decent human standard is not going to cut it. You see, we are not called to attain a decent human standard, but we are called to live according to God's standard for our lives. As Christians, we are supposed to be God's servants, and He's the one that we get our standards from. We are to be Christ-like. That's what the term Christian means, to be Christ-like. Now, in the previous verse, we saw that uh, there was a denial of fellowship for those who walk in darkness. If you walk in darkness, the Bible says you lie and do not the truth. Now, you might say that you have fellowship with God, but if you're walking in darkness, you don't really have fellowship with God at all. Now, after this previous denial of fellowship with God, we might expect to hear in this next verse that those who walk in the light really do have fellowship with God. But instead... 
the scripture says that we have fellowship one with another. You see. Now, of course, if you're walking in the light as he is in the light, and you are having fellowship with others who are also walking in the light as he is in the light, this is naturally uh, going to include fellowship with God. Um, because according to verse 3, our fellowship with God finds expression in our fellowship with one another. Verse 3 says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And this is essentially uh, seen to be the same as having fellowship with God. If we're walking in the light as he is in the light and we have fellowship one with another, then we're also having fellowship with God. But we shouldn't let that diminish John's expression that he uses here in verse number 7 because fellowship with other believers is of vast significance and importance in the life of a child of God. We need this fellowship with one another. We need to come together and fellowship and have uh, this encouragement and exhort one another uh, each day as, as uh, the Bible clearly commands the believer to do these things. Uh, now John goes on to add a further point here by saying that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Now that word cleanseth is in a contagious sense, and that just simply means that it's not referring to that once and for all cleansing that we receive when we believe, but it's speaking of an activity which takes place day by day. And this day by day cleansing in the life of a child of God is a direct consequence of walking in the light, you see. So, and it's also, we could say that it is a confirmation that the one who walks in the light as he is in the light, and we have this day by day cleansing, uh, that that is a confirmation that that individual has received the initial cleansing. I would go on to say that if a man or a woman doesn't see the importance of desiring this day-by-day -day cleansing that the Bible's talking about here, that that's probably an indication that that person hasn't received an initial cleansing and is an unregenerate uh, individual. Now, a little bit later in this epistle, John is going to recognize and point out the impossibility of you and I being free from all sin. So, again, he's not speaking about sinless perfection. He's saying that if we walk in the light, in other words, if you're truly walking with the Lord, your sins will be cleansed. And every one of us needs this con continual cleansing. It makes no difference how close you are to God you still need this initial day-by-day -day cleansing. The person who is closest to God right now on planet Earth, whoever that may be, and is walking with God closer than anyone else, that person still needs this initial day-by-day -day cleansing that we're speaking of here. Now, what is it that does the cleansing? Well, the Scripture says it's the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, that cleanseth us from all sin. And just that very term, the blood, points us to life. It's because Jesus died for us on the cross of Calvary, and he shed his blood for us that we could have this cleansing of sin. But uh, his blood, it says, cleanseth us from all sin. It's in the singular. It's talking about the active sin that's in our lives. This is the cleansing of sanctification. The death of Jesus Christ is what makes this a reality. Uh, for the children of God today. Friend, let me say this. If you're out there today and you're walking in darkness and you have no fellowship with God and your life has shown no regard for the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to repent of your sins today. You need to be born again by the matchless grace of God. You need to trust in Christ and believe in Him and be born again. My prayer for you today is that you will believe and give your heart and life to Jesus Christ and begin walking in the light even as He is in the light. Would you call upon the name of Jesus today? Would you do that, my dear friend? Because without Jesus, there is no salvation. 
Without Jesus, there is no eternal life. A future without Jesus is a future you don't want to be a part of. Trust Him by faith today and devote your life to Him in being conformed to the image of Christ. Thank you all for watching today. Please like and share this video. If you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, we pray that you'll uh, please consider doing that. And until next time, may God's blessings be with you.